first of all, thanks to Jeb for inviting me and for organizing the uh, the study group in general. Um, I uh, I'm going to talk about my paper on the global proletariat and uh, the fractions that I have developed, um, just as a, a way of both sort of trying to deal with groups that we wouldn't normally consider uh, part of the same class, or um, deal with some of the, the sort of variation across uh, geographies and across industries um, in, in terms of the way that, that, that workers can be categorized or, or observed. Um, I'm operating from the position of uh, what I consider an objective class analysis. Um, that is to say, I, I try not to look at things like um, production center, or, or pardon me, um, uh, market situations or occupational prestige, um, subjective class identification, things like uh, uh, the, the, G, the measure on the GSS that asks, what class do you belong to? I'm not particularly <coughs> interested in that. Um, I think uh, at this point in time, um, class is sort of out of a lot of, at least in the United States, out of um, the, the realm of identity formation for, for most, most people. Um, so when I say objective class identification, I mean specifically production-centered uh, uh, production analysis of class. Um, class formation takes place on the shop floor or in the cubicle or uh, uh, in, at, the, at the workplace, not in the market itself. Um, not when the, the hands are, are shaped and the uh, contract is signed, but when the work actually takes place. Um, so for me, the, the commodity form is the, the first place to start. Um, capitalism itself is, is characterized uh, by, by Marx as um, a uh, set of relations that, that revolve around the production of commodities. Um, so when we begin analyzing social life under capitalism, we start um, with uh, the uh, we, we start with the commodity itself. Pardon me, I'm trying to skip ahead of, of my own notes here. Um, so if we start with the idea that commodities are the embodiment or objectification of human labor power, um, and we, we start with this idea that production itself conditions class relations. Um, we can move on to the idea of the circuit. Everybody's familiar with it in this room, I'm sure. Um, money, commodities, money prime, um, into production itself. Uh, the whole circuit presupposes the capitalist character of the production, proce pr production process, and hence this production process as a basis, as well as the, as the specific social relations determined by it. Um, so we get to this, this point in the production process where the circuit is globalized, which is why um, I think a lot of folks in this department are here. Um, <laughs> uh, I think globalization itself is considered uh, conceptually and practically the inter internationalization of the productive circuit of capital. Um, while other circuits have been internationalized for quite some time, uh, production itself has only recently undergone internationalization. Specifically when I look at the way production conditions class relations, I'm looking at the types of capital. That's variable capital and constant capital. Um, variable capital is self-acting labor power. Um, you can consider it the source of uh, wages paid to workers. Um, it's uh, the living labor set in motion by capital's value. If we think about capital in these terms, let me go back to constant capital. Um, let's see. Uh, variable capital is constituted transnationally, uh, confronts the worker as something literally foreign, um, but it is at once familiar. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter that the, the wages that a, worker's, a worker is paid comes from a different region, comes from a different uh, transnational, cap it comes from a, a transnational capitalist or a local capitalist. Um, the market in which the two parties make contracts remains a market 
It's just trying. It tr just transcends boundaries, um, and the relationship that takes place between the, the capitalist and the worker at that point uh, definitely indicates a, a, a transnational relation. Even if the the relationship isn't itself evident to either party, for that matter. Uh, in the case of constant capital. Um, it's the value of all means of production applied to production in this branch, uh, breaks down into fixed and circulating capital. Again, um, this constant circulating capital has been international in nature for a good amount of time, and certain forms of fixed capital that are traded as commodities have been international for uh, a long time, but constant capital as it's employed now um, is, is transnational again. So each each incremental product that moves from place to place, from one geographic region to another, uh, within a firm or between subsidiaries of firms, um, constitutes uh, or, or builds on this, this idea of transnational uh, relations between workers and between workers and capitals. Um, Again, these things confront workers as something that are at once familiar and foreign. Uh, the social origins of the objects that the worker engages with um, indicate that they're engaged in, in a global chain, whether it's just the, the linguistic artifacts that are associated with them um, or whether it's uh, the, the types of, of methods that are used in the production process that, that might be foreign. Um, When the, let's see, when the completion of the circuit is dependent upon the expenditure of labor power cooperatively and cumulatively, and this is really my argument here, um, in multiple geographic locations, and it's dependent upon multiple fixed capital inputs, and it, uses, it utilizes constant circulating capital um, from many geographic locations, the only thing that remains national in that context is the worker himself or herself. Um, so in, in that case, I, the, si simply put, I'm saying that the relationships are clearly transnational. They aren't just national. They aren't just uh, uh, based on, on the familiar circumstances that, that the worker operates within socially and culturally. It, it is economically complicated. So, not all workers in the, so in the, in the global system um, operate within these production chains. Some of them are operating sort of peripherally to them. Um, I think Mbong refers to uh, people who are not directly related to the reproduction process, um, but they, they still have a hand in, in reproducing those conditions by allowing workers um, in those, those transnational chains to continue to, to reproduce their own conditions. Um, but insofar as some are or are not transnationally engaged as workers, and insofar as their activities vary in location and content, um, I think we can differenti differentiate workers in the global system um, by, by certain conditions. Um, and this, this this is true not only for workers at the top of the hierarchy, um, and by hierarchy kind of in this sense I mean um, the, the sort of privileges that, that workers uh, enjoy, um, but it's also true for, for workers at the bottom of the, the, the pool of proletarian marginals, kind of what we were talking about prior to, to starting where um, even folks who aren't necessarily engaged in, in industrial labor at all or, or directly engaged in, in circuits they're potentially engaged. Um, so the, this differentiation can take place whether workers are at the top or at the bottom, whether they are actually engaged or they are uh, potentially engaged. And just before I, I move on um, to the, the fractions themselves, uh, 